SwiftUI can detect when your app moves to the background, i.e. when the user swipes up to return to the home screen. It can also tell us when the app will move back to the foreground, perhaps they've tapped the icon again. When you put these two things together, we can intelligently start and stop work depending on whether the user can see our app right now or not. Doing this takes three steps. First, adding a new property that watches an environment key called scene phase. Second, using on change to watch that scene phase. And third, adding our own custom logic to respond to scene phase changes. Now you might wonder why it's called scene phase rather than app phase or similar. But remember, Swift UI code like we're writing right now also works great on iPad. On an iPad, your app will be running in multiple places at the same time. Perhaps you have two versions side by side, or one here and one attached to Notes, and a third one attached to Safari, and a fourth one attached to who knows what. Each of these windows of your app are called scenes. And yes, they all belong to the same app underneath, but each individual window of it is called a scene. So it's scene phase. What's this current part of your application doing right now? Okay, let's go ahead and give it a try by saying first, making the property to read the environment key. So I'll say at environment backslash dot scene phase var scene phase. So watch the scene phase. Then we'll attach our on change modifier to say when scene phase changes, scene phase, run some code and it'll pass us the new phase coming in. Inside here we'll say if the new phase is equal to dot active, or dot active even, dot active. There we go. If that's why, idiot. Um, then we'll do print active. Else if new phase is equal to dot inactive, print inactive. Else if new phase is equal to dot background, print background. And with those three states in place, we can go ahead and press Command R and get a feel for how our app moves between these various states. So you'll see actives down here right now. If I go up to, uh, well, probably it shift command H, there we go, home screen. You'll see it's inactive, then background. And I'll go back to Flashzilla. We'll have inactive, active. Again, inactive, background. So you can see when we're on the home screen, we are considered to be a background state right now. And if we're in active, it moves to inactive, then active. So there's three states we care about right now. Uh, active scenes, this one right now, you can see it's running right now, which on iOS means they're visible to the user. On macOS, of course, the active app might be running and visible, but perhaps fully obscured behind another application. So it's, you know, it's technically visible, but you can't see it right now because it's behind Safari or something. Um, but it's still active. It's still running and, and ready to go. Inactive scenes, these are ones that might be visible to the user, but the user can't access them directly for some reason. For example, if you're sort of swiping down from the top to read control center, boom, you'll see we're in active state now. I can still see the program running. I'm not in the background state, but it's not active either. I can't interact with it. If I swipe all the way down, fine. It's still the active application. It's still the one in the background. It's not, it's not fully background yet. It's just not visible. Anyway, here we are, unlock, boom. There it was. So it's always there along, just obscured slightly. Similarly, if you're in like multitasking mode, I can see it. It's not background, it's not active either, it's just inactive, all the way until I choose something else. So that's active and inactive. Background are scenes that are not visible to the user. Like it's, I meant a different program in shortcuts or files or who knows what. Um, they're not even vaguely visible right now. And on iOS, that means they might be terminated at some point in the future. If you spend a lot of time in Safari or some game, whatever, and there's memory pressure, memory's running quite tight, it'll start silently killing background processes to try and make space in the RAM. And if yours is older or less used, you are on the chopping block.